Locked and loaded into our number four on this Friday transmission. Oslo rocked today by a uh, multiple terror attacks in Norway at a island with uh, people on the beach reporting 20 plus dead. A empty or quasi empty government building on a holiday uh, attacked at least seven dead there. Uh, we had an eyewitness on who narrowly survived, was actually knocked back by the explosion 200 feet away on Robert. He's going out as part of civil defense to help uh, with things and is going to be uh, back on with us Sunday, perhaps sending us photos and things. Uh, well, this is a short segment. I'll give Bob Chapman the floor to continue to break down the terror attack. We're going to come back, uh, take calls, and then get back into the economy. The main reason Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster joins us uh, every Friday. Uh, Bob Chapman, um, again, uh, with this whole situation going on, uh, what's your take on it? Well, I think at the bottom of, of it all is the uh, terrible thrashing the banks have taken in this Greek episode and beyond that. And they're going to have to come up with an awful lot of money um, that they're going to have to spend in the process of renewing Greek bonds. Uh, of course, those bonds will be uh, backed uh, by uh, or fully collateralized by AAA rated zero coupon securities with a 30 year maturity. And uh, they will be backed by the uh, European Monetary Fund, which is something I haven't even heard of before. And, and so they're very, very d d disturbed about that. And, of course, behind it uh, were the German people. And we saw that in the elections in the Hamburg area uh, about three months ago when the CDU, which is Mrs. Merkel's party, got thrashed. Uh, really badly because the people don't want any more money going into countries that uh, have made those kind of mistakes. And uh, they're sick and tired of being buried in debt, and they just want out of the whole thing. And that was followed up by commentary, uh, uh, which um, uh, came out uh, several days ago uh, by Finland. In fact, I'll tell you something interesting. Uh, uh, Harley Schlanger with the... Uh, LaRoche people was uh, in Brussels at the meeting that they had, and uh, when he came back, he was talking to uh, Erskine, and he, he, he asked him what he thought of the whole thing, and he said, well, uh, the, they answered him, this Dutch group, and they said, we're, we're sick and tired of it as well. And he said, well, how do you get all your information? And he said, well, I, we, we listened to Bob Chapman's broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of threw me. But, uh, and the Finns are in the same boat. They don't want to continue this. And so what's happening is the bankers are barely hanging on here by their fingernails. And it would be a good opportunity for them to instruct their minions to create a false flag attack like this or uh, in an incident like this in Oslo, uh, doing all the things that you've described and why they do them. Well said, Bob. Um, we're going to learn more, obviously, in the hours and days to come. But, I mean, if, the banksters, every time they get cornered or get in trouble, they stage terror to maybe we'll rally around the governments they've bought and paid for. But, I mean, I don't see this working. I don't see them. I mean, take my, take my story yesterday, Paul Watson's story at Prison Planet. That's one of the biggest stories in the country right now. I mean, every talk radio show I tune into is talking about the rollout of the white Al-Qaeda TV ads at the... You know, the white people are going to get you, and the minorities are reporting them. Uh, you know, first, they demonize you know, brown folks over just taking their rights to get some racist whites to go along with it. Now they're flipping to the other side. I mean, this, uh, all this scripting together, this um, looks like we're going to try to roll this out, but I don't see people buying it. Well, I agree with you. I, I don't think they're going to. It's just like um, crying wolf. Uh, you're only going to do it so many times, and all of a sudden, nobody's going to come and... The wolf comes and he gobbles you up. And that's the concept. They're going to the well too often. And people are realizing, because of what's happened before in other operations, and listening to your program, they get the truth. Absolutely. And Stay there, Bob. The wolf comes and gobbles them up. Uh, this new UN Green Army to invade countries that don't submit to the environmental tyranny of the banksters. 
But but yesterday, Paul Watson wrote an article off a new DHS nine and a half minute video. They're putting a bunch of these out where out of dozens and dozens of terrorists in it, almost all of them are white and they have the blue eyes glowing and uh, it's all minorities reporting the white people. Clearly, this is designed just like they've had TV ads and things to make all Muslims look like terrorists or all people with brown skin can't be trusted. They sell white folks on giving up their liberties because, oh, you know, it's the scary brown people. And then we pointed out now they're flipping it. <coughs> As I said in the articles I wrote, to, oh, my, minorities, it's the white folks. They're about to start terror attacking you. And I have all the internal documents and memos where the Homeland Security says, we're not worried about al-Qaeda. We just sell the public on that. It's really the returning veterans, the Ron Paul supporters, the bullion gold owners. Uh, and now in this new video, it's do you write on pieces of paper? Do you type into a phone? Do you have a cell phone? Do you have a camera? Uh, you know, uh, This is what they push. Clearly, that's what they're doing. And on one video we shot, uh, we have 495 likes on YouTube, 28 dislikes. Big Sis says whites are terrorists, 33,000 views. Shot this yesterday. And uh, I see comments uh, here. Shame on Alex Jones. Uh, by bringing up irrelevant topics like white people, he has discredited himself as a racist. I bet the next thing he tries to convince his listeners of is that black people intend to kill all white people in America. And that that's a straw man. And that because of that, we should not vote for Barack Obama. This is an idiot Obama supporter. I'm telling you not to vote for Rick Perry either, moron. But for white Ron Paul. No, not because he's white, because he's a principled person who knows the issues and, 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 and understands the banksters. I can't believe that people are still listening to this guy. Alex, you bleep. And, and there's, there's a bunch of those comments. And, and it, it's, you know, if you don't support government-run health care, you hate black people, Chris Matthews said. It, it, it's not even, it doesn't have sense. It's nonsensical. They clearly are, have been saying now in the last few years, white Al-Qaeda is about to hit. The militias and Ron Paul supporters are with Al-Qaeda. I've had them say it about me, that, that I secretly work for Al-Qaeda because I point out it was created by Zbigniew Brzezinski and the U.S. government on record and have former heads of black ops like Dr. Pachinik on to document that's the case. Uh, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they, first, they demonize a minority that it's more kosher to go after, like Hitler did. Then they go after everybody. That's what I'm saying. It's what the video says, and it shows how fixated people are on race, that there are black folks in these comments, because you can go to their channels and you know see the videos they post, and they say they're black, uh, saying, you're racist because you say this ad targets white people. Listen. I get accused of sticking up for Al Qaeda when I say that you know it's 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 a scapegoat and a stereotype to say Muslims are terrorists. Okay, so I'm tired of it. I'm telling you, they're shifting all this over to white people. And if you don't know that the establishment attacks whatever group is seen as wealthy and strong, you don't know what you're talking about. White people are under attack in this country. Everybody's under attack, just like black folks are under attack, and I did shows on that this week. I stand for justice and truth and reality, okay? And you need to grow up, okay? I'm against national health care because it lets the government decide what care you get, and the insurance companies wrote the plan, not because I hate black people. Stop being idiots. Bob Chapman, do you have any comments on this? Yes, this is uh, diversion tactics, and uh, it's to separate groups. It's to cause a chaos eventually. Uh, it's been going on for years and years. Uh, the communists use it effectively. Uh, and now we're having it used upon us as Americans. And it's not going to let up. This propaganda machine is in high gear, and it will remain there. And, of course, people who are out front telling the truth, trying to back into the answers to things that happen or things that might happen, uh, they are branded as people that have to be silenced or done away with. And uh, if you're on radio and you're doing what Alex is doing and I'm doing, uh, you've got to expect it and you can't get disturbed about it. You handle it just like another problem, uh, quietly and objectively, uh, which Alex has done. And uh, you just beat them back with the truth, and uh, 
they go away and they find another tack and they come back and tack you again. So it's a never-ending process. And some of these people are working for the United States government. And well, that's admitted. That they out. even have fake robo-blogs and, and the Pentagon doing it. You know, my issue is I'm not upset that I'm being attacked. I'm upset that some of these are probably real people that are this dumbed down who really believe if you don't want government health care, you're a racist. I mean, it's just insane, Bob. Well, it, it's understandable, even though it is insane, because the government, the people who control government from behind the scenes, have been working on this since the 1930s. I mean, you saw it during the Second World War and thereafter. And they've done it through the school systems. And uh, the children uh, grow up not learning very much. And they're easy prey for these people who create propaganda, sending them off in the wrong direction, uh, giving them wrong ideas, and, and they're gullible. And they probably have never had their brain taxed, so to speak, in doing difficult problems such as figuring out that the media belongs to the people who want to shape our minds. And they don't get into that because there's nothing that they've done in education that would prepare them for that. And so they're real victims. They are, and, and they just... They just buy into like simple-minded one-liners uh, that uh, you know have no effect on reality, and, and then they discount being real participants in the world and just become spectators. I want to go to Luke, Sean, Nick, Randy, Andrew, and others coming up. We're going to get into the economy and a bunch of other issues. That's why Bob's here. Uh, Luke in South Korea, you're on the air. Welcome. Oh, hi, Alex. How are you going? Good. What's your view on all this? Oh, it's just shocking what's happening around the world now. Um, I, look, my, my matter is actually not as big, but it does unlock lots of Australian minds because in the Australian scene, we don't have enough, as I said before, we don't have enough terrorists who are demonising motorcycle gangs. If the public were woken up to find out Australia's first gang law was used against an 18-year-old Aboriginal boy and not against any of these bikies. The yeah, because he called somebody who was gay, gay. He's been arrested. And now in England just last week, they arrested somebody for their Facebook making a mild racial comment about a football player. Uh, this is the new secret police uh, free speech attacking system, Luke. Well, I've learned a lot more about it. I've learned that the officer in charge of the investigation is the officer that's accusing the Aboriginal boy of the crime of obtaining true personal information about police. 60C Crimes Act. I've talked to his mother. The boy's been hit across the head with the yellow pages. And I just found out the government broadcaster has done this most bizarre hit piece against him. You could probably put some of it to, uh, to air later. You've got this oh, but guy see, the gay people expert. are being persecuted, so it's okay to beat the black kid over the head with a, with a, uh, with a phone book. That'll teach him. Well, what the ABC News has done is before the kid's trial, they're, they're accusing him of being stupid and lacking etiquette. There's two stories that put online called Learning Online Etiquette on the ABC News for the Mid-North Coast and uh, Facebook Harassment. Yeah, because I've like seen them. Because if you don't rules. have the right etiquette, we're going to put you in jail. Uh, you know, no free speech. I'm aware of the stories. Thank you, Luke. Bob Chapman, uh, they are galloping forward. Uh, you know, I had a national TV host in here yesterday who who is involved in, 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 in advocating for gay and lesbian groups. Fine, that's his issue. I don't even get into those things. But he had to hesitate. I said, should I be arrested if I criticize these groups? Is what England and others are doing? And they had to hesitate and say, well, no, I guess that's free speech. See, th this is where this is going. Bob Chapman. Well, uh, and that's particularly on that issue. But uh, we were talking about uh, the people who don't understand, so to speak. And all I can say to that is that the other half of the people do understand and have the ability to understand. And you and I and others like us have been given a gift where we can communicate with people on an intelligent level, but very simply so. And it's up to us to use the equipment that we've been given so that we can help these people understand. And uh, that's our job. So there is a flip side to all of the people who don't understand. We're here to help them.